Hey guys, it's Nero Saldris, and today we're going to be doing a little bit of a different video. I thought that since a lot of new people are coming to the game, that I should make a little bit of a guide for any of them that might want to get into PvP. We're just going to be going through some of the classes that I really like to play and some of the classes that I think beginners could really pick up on quite easily. And we're going to explain the abilities, the defensives, the gear, and the utilities that you might want to take for them. It's going to be generally a pretty beginner-friendly overview kind of guide, so you know, just sit back, relax, and enjoy. Here we have the Vengeance Juggernaut. And this is going to be one of the easier classes in the game to play and also currently one of the best classes for doing very high DPS. What this class does is it applies bleed stacks to your selected target using certain abilities and then spreads those bleed stacks to everybody in the nearby vicinity using the Vengeful Slam ability. Now I will demonstrate this in, uh, on this dummy real quick here. Let me get some... Uh rage going on and the abilities that will apply bleed stacks are shatter impale and force scream see there's three bleed stacks and you can spread them with vengeful slam the area of vengeful slam including the target is what is going to uh cause the bleeds to stack and spread for instance you stack them onto this target and then you vengeful slam. Someone was standing here with the bleeds. Someone was standing here that does not have the bleeds. The bleeds will now be on both of them. Doing this, you can get a ridiculously high amount of damage very easily on this class. Another thing that makes this a beginner friendly class is that it has very easy to understand defensives. Enrage Defense will simply heal you every time you are hit up to 12 times when you activate it basically bringing you up to full health unless someone can do enough damage with one hit to bring you to zero before the healing hit can occur. So I would generally recommend using it when you're at about 20% health. Uh, Saber Ward is just going to be a damage reduction ability. If you're in a fight, you're taking a lot of damage, activate that for some reduction on that damage. It does reduce only certain kinds of damage, but it will be very effective in prolonging the amount of time you have until your enraged defense can come back up. Then there's Saber Reflex. Saber Reflex simply reflects all direct single target damage that is, uh, uh, that's force and ranged. And so, you know, if you see someone casting a very powerful ability at you, and usually it's going to be those ones with the uh, little cast bar if you're on their focus, you can just pop that, or you know, if you're in a big, big crowd, and if you feel like you're being focused, pop that, and you're going to reflect a lot of that damage right back at them. And there's Endure Pain. Endure Pain can give you a damage debuff. Uh, not a damage debuff, a damage uh, reduction of whatever it used, and what it does is just boost your health. And that health will disappear. So I would normally use this for the damage reduction, but there's also one other situation in which I would use it, in which... My health has become so low that I risk dying immediately even if I use Enraged Defense because someone will just deal enough damage to send me to zero before the healing can occur. So in that situation, I will use Endure Pain and then Enraged Defense because it will give me the extra little bit to survive any hits that I take. Other than that, you also can provide a lot of utility to your team at this class. This is what's known as a tanking class... Uh, offset so within the warrior juggernaut tree there is vengeance rage and immortal and since there is immortal you do have some of the abilities that immortals have for tanking meaning guard and intercede intercede will provide damage reduction to an ally that you intercede to and guard can be used in order to protect allies if necessary though i wouldn't generally recommend doing this un if, unless you have no dedicated tank on your team you have Intimidating Roar, which will mez, not hard stun, meaning that if you damage them again afterwards, they will be brought out of it. It will stun targets near you and keep them there for up to eight, six seconds. Then there's also your Taunt and your Threatening Scream, which is an AoE taunt. Taunts will just make it so that people that are affected by them will do reduced damage to anyone other than you. So I also wouldn't recommend using this uh, unless there isn't a dedicated tank and you don't want everybody to just pile on to you. It is good practice to just throw out taunts 
the not the AOE one, just regular taunts at people that you see that aren't attacking you, but say trying to attack your healer, and that will just make them do less damage to your healer, while minimal risk of having them coming to switch to you, because they probably won't notice that they've been taunted. And that's a general overview of this class. I would consider it to be one of the easier ones to play, and currently it's very meta for doing high DPS numbers. The set bonus I would recommend for this class is Descent of the Fearless, along with the Cut to Pieces Tactical to maximize your damage output, and the stats as you can see on the side. You can go for a little less accuracy and a little more critical, or you could go for a little more accuracy and a little less critical. It's really up to you. Also, uh, there is another tactical you could use with this. It's called Grit Teeth, and what that will do is that will greatly reduce the cooldown on your rage defense but generally it will come at the cost of doing DPS. Most matches I will just go with cut to pieces because the defensives are already very good and there usually will be a healer to help keep you up if it isn't enough. That concludes my overview on Vengeance Juggernaut. This is the Fury Marauder. Uh, I would say this is arguably the most popular Marauder class in order to uh, do PvP with and you know generally in all kinds of content. It's got the dual sabers, very cool indeed. Uh, this class is going to excel at chasing down and doing damage to targets that's gonna be wanting that, that are going to be wanting to run away from you. Uh, it's very easy to manage the rage on this class, uh, particularly because of your berserk ability, which simply just gives you a whole bunch of rage continuously. Uh, this class generally you can work off on a rotation. Uh, I have a quick one just set up right here on my ability bar. You can do Force Crush, just uh, op uh, obliterate to them. You're going to Raging Burst, you can do your uh, Furious Strike, Ravage, and then by then you'll be running out of Force, so you can just do a Battering Assault to get that back up. And then, you know, Force Scream and all the other abilities. A few things to consider while playing this class is that certain abilities will cause the Golden Aura to come around other abilities. So, for instance, Obliterate will always cause... Oh, wait, let me get my... Uh, let me get the dummy back. Obliterate will cause these abilities to glow up, and then it will be used up. Another ability that will cause them to start glowing is your leap, and then you can use another one and it'll go away, other than force screen there. But uh, generally you want to play around these big hitters. You want to play around Raging Burst and Furious Strike and these little... Dang it, it keeps going away. And these little procs that you get for using that ability on them. And I would only recommend using it on Smash if there's a bunch of enemies near you and you're trying to do a little bit of AoE damage. Uh, some defensives to consider in this class is going to be Saber Ward. Saber Ward is just going to uh, reduce the damage you take. It works basically the same way as it does on the Assassin. Uh, Undying Rage is going to be one of your primary defensives because what it does is it reduces your damage taken by 99%. For up to six seconds and that's going to be like a, oh crap i'm about to take big damage so let me just pop that or like i'm very very low i need to buy my healer some time let me just hit that then i'll have six seconds for my healer to get out of a stun or uh recover some of their force so they can heal me up again cloak of pain is going to deal some damage as well it's going to reduce your damage reduction and it's very useful it uh, has a very long uh it has a very long time that it's going to be in an effect for, and I would basically just use this whenever you enter a fight. You also have a lot of team utility with this class, with your predation ability, which is going to grant everyone around you and yourself a massive mobility bonus that's just going to let you run and zip around the map real quick. Uh, to make this into a, an ability on its own that doesn't require any force to activate, I would recommend taking this, abil this utility right here, Unbound. It's, uh... It... This ability in conjunction with where it is there, it is relentless. So these, this is going to increase the speed, and this is going to make it no longer consume fury, but rather have a cooldown. Uh, you also have Intimidating Roar on this class, which is a good mez uh, to stun the targets around you, or mez the targets around you, and if you do damage to them, they will be broken out of that mez, and they will be able to move again. Uh, another thing, you do have Mad Dash. It's another great ability for mo uh, for increasing your mobility and chasing down targets. Uh, you have Frenzy. Frenzy is an awesome ability that will just immediately give you the 30 stacks of fear you need to use Berserk. 
and that I use this in the opener. I always leap to the target, frenzy, berserk, and then go right into them with the damage. Uh, a few more things to consider on this class. You do have force camouflage, which can get you out of a pickle if you're like trying to run away. Or another, uh, a common way I like to use it is if I see someone about to do big damage to me, like channeling a big ability like on Sorcerer, I will just use that real quick to make me go off of their focus target and cancel their channel, basically ruining their ability to do damage right there for that, with that ability. And then I'll just leap right back onto them uh, to do my damage onto them. Uh, that's pretty much, yeah, that's pretty much the overview for Fury Marauder. I generally consider it to be a pretty easy class to play because the, for, uh, the rage management is significantly easier than any of the other uh, uh, Marauder classes. And so it's going to be good for beginners who generally just want to deal damage. This is the Carnage Marauder, and it is actually slightly more complicated than the Fury Marauder. Uh, mainly due to the fact that on this specification you actually have to manage your rage. Uh, you can't just get away with using Berserk whenever in order to full bar it, because in this class it does something different. Uh, Berserk here will grant you 30% extra alacrity, increasing the... Uh, ability speed like uh, the speed of your animations and the speed of the damage and the speed of the cooldown and it will also uh, give you an extra stack of ferocity and that brings me to the main point of carnage is that carnage can do damage at 100 uh, percent armor penetration so you can do this through the ferocity ability which will give you two stacks normally one extra stack with berserk and the three stacks then you can use on other abilities that will have 100% damage penetration. You obviously want to use this on your big hitters like Gore, Devastating Blast, or Vicious Throw. Uh, but you can also use them all on Massacre. That's a good way to go. Three Massacres. Uh, you will want to use Battering Assault whenever possible to build up your Rage. And uh, Ravage is always there as a filler damage ability. And you have your typical mad dash, high mobility, gets you where you need to go. You have your predation, which will give you and your teammates a good movement buff. Uh, and again, to make this into an ability instead of something that consumes force, you want relentless and then make it faster. You want unbound. Uh, this class, what it's really good at, it's really good at just sticking onto a certain target and going and just killing tanks because of the armor penetration. Uh, so you're going to be doing a lot of damage. It's actually currently my favorite spec on uh, Marauder to play. Let me just give you a test of what like a standard opener would probably look like. And then I'm just going to go Massacre, 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 Ravage, and then oh look, Battering Assault's back up again and I have Rage. Now you're really going to need to pay attention to that Rage because uh, once it gets low you're going to need to battering assault or you might need to mad dash away from the target and then leap back onto them to get some more rage and also fill some more time for battering assault to come back up if it hasn't set bonus wise i would recommend the descent of the fearless set uh pretty much any warrior based damage class that's fury marauder uh carnage marauder vengeance juggernaut rage juggernaut even the immortal juggernaut will be have heavily benefit from the descent of the fearless and so this is actually probably the first set bonus i'd recommend you getting uh, for the tactical, it's going to be Fanged God Form. Fanged God Form is just incredibly useful. It increases your tech, uh, your critical chance, and it also makes it so that uh, Massacre is going to basically cost no uh, no rage by the third time you use it. So that's why you always want to use it in three times in a row. You can also Massacre Spam when nothing else is basically up, and you don't want to do Ferocity just for like a non proct meaning a non-golden devastating blast. So yeah, you just Massacre uh, pretty often. Defensive wise, you got Saber Ward. Does it, what it does in every other class? Uh, increases your d defense chance by a lot. Uh, increases your damage reduction, and it basically just helps you survive. You know, uh, Undying Rage. It's gonna reduce the damage you take by 99%. I typically use this as like a nope, get out of here, taking big damage ability, or like a, I need to survive for like an extra solid six seconds. And so uh, my until like my healers up, or until like my tank can swap to me. Then I'll use this, and the thing that makes it 6 seconds as well, it's this utility. It uh, increases it by a lot 2 seconds, and reduces the cooldown. Uh, Cloak of Pain is just going to give you some damage reduction real quick, and I would basically just use this at the start of any fight, You and it's going to last a long time, so uh, just use that, start the fight, and get right into it. Uh, you have your Intimidating Roar, which once again is just going to cause you to mez every target around you, 
and if you take deal damage to the mez targets then they will be broken out of the mez and they'll be able to move again uh yeah that's pretty much it one thing i would like to mention that i actually didn't in the fury portion is the uh the obfuscate ability obfuscate lowers the target's uh accuracy for about six seconds by a huge amount so if you feel like you're about to take big damage from someone you might want to obfuscate them it has a pretty close range though so you have to get right up to them and then uh well, I can't really use it on that, but yeah, it has a pretty close range. It's about four meters, and you get right up to them, and you use it, and then boom, they can't, they're basically not going to be doing much damage to you with uh, at least force and tech damage for about six seconds. And yeah, that's about it for Carnage. Here we have the Deception Assassin. The Deception Assassin isn't the best class to play at the moment, but it can be very easy to get into. And it's quite a fun class to play. It's actually what I used to main for the majority of my time playing this game. And uh, it's quite an easy class to get into, as I said, because basically, if you follow this rule, you can do good damage on it. Press whatever lights up. And whenever nothing's lit, hit Voltic Slash until something is lit up. Now, I'm not kidding when you when I say you actually can sort of just follow this, but there are some finer points to go into. For instance, whenever Discharge pops up, you do want to use that immediately. And what I like to do is I like to stack Discharges very quickly because Recklessness will give you three stacks of Discharge. So I'll go into another Discharge right after that. And Phantom Stride will also give you another three stacks of Discharge. So I like to hit right there like that. Three Discharges in a row, it's going to do a lot of big damage. Uh, you're going to want to use uh, Reaping Strike and Assassinate whenever they pop up too, and Maul and Ball Lightning. I said you could basically use whatever glows, but if you wanted to get a little bit more into that, the basic priority system goes Voltic Slash when nothing is up, Maul and Ball Lightning whenever they glow, uh, Reaping Strike whenever they glow, but and Assassinate whenever it glows. But other than any of that, Discharge, as soon as it comes up, because all these other abilities build stacks of discharge, so you want to get rid of the three stacks that you have built, so that whenever you're pressing some of these other abilities, you're going to already be building back up your discharge. So yeah, discharge whenever it comes up, just use it. At three stacks, use it. Uh, some other things to consider on this class, it is a stealth class again. You can stealth in, you can spike your opponent, so stunning them. You have a force cloak, which lets you stealth out even when you're in combat. Uh, this uh, deflection is one of your defensives. It works the same way as it does on other classes. Basically, just reduces the damage that you take for about 12 seconds. Use this if you're just taking sustained damage in a big fight. Overcharge Saber is going to increase your damage while also giving you back a little bit of health. You can use it both as a defensive and an offensive. I generally keep it as a defensive just because um, it's going to be doing you're going to be doing big damage either way. Uh, really not really big damage by the end of it but it's single target damage you're gonna be hitting whoever you're hitting very hard but you're not gonna be doing much by the end of the game it's currently not very it's not a very good spot for that uh, severing slash is the new ability that we got and basically this is just an AoE cone in front of you that's going to slow down all the targets and the way I like to play deception is I just like to be annoying as hell so what I'm going to do is I'm going to severing slash people near me I'm going to force slow people near me uh, and I'm just going to make it a very bad day for them, make them really, really slowly move and not be able to do much unless they use abilities that purge all those kinds of effects, uh, like their force speed to run away from me. Uh, some of the more advanced things to consider in the class is also Force Shroud. You can use Force Shroud to cancel out big DPS coming your way because it uh, adds 200% resistance for force and tech attacks for 5 seconds uh, with the utility. And that's going to be like, oh, look, Sork is about to do big damage to me. Let me just activate Force Word and uh, absorb all that real quick. You have your little stun, and you also have uh, Lacerate, but I generally wouldn't use this unless you're in a crowd of about four people. Then it becomes worth it to be able to use this. Uh, you have your Overload, which just pushes people away in an AoE cone around you. You have Whirlwind, which is going to be a eight second mez on uh, your target and the mez is if you if you do damage to them it will be broken and they'll be able to move again but as long as you don't do damage to them after using this ability they'll be stuck there for eight seconds unless they use their breaker to get out uh one of the cool things you can do with this class that i really like is low slash low slash is just going to Im uh just incapacitate a target for four seconds unless you do damage to them 
uh, and a very useful way to use this and help your team out is just while you're doing damage, while you're doing what you're doing, target the enemy healer and throw a low slash at them. They'll be stunned for four seconds, and that'll give your team the opportunity to close in on a kill or do big damage to whoever they need to without the healer getting in the way of that. Uh, some of the other things to consider on this class is that there's a mind trap. So while you're while you're stealthed, you could just come over at, on the opener of a fight if someone's not in combat already. Mind trap them, which is going to keep them there for about eight seconds, uh, sixty seconds if they're an NPC. But and it's just gonna it's gonna keep them there stunned unless they take damage and they'll be out of the fight for eight seconds or they'll be forced to use their breaker. It's a very bad decision for them to make. You can modify that as well, uh, in, with your utilities in order to make it so that they will take uh, greatly reduced uh, damage that they can put out once they get out of mine trap. Uh, but that's uh, that's in the utilities. Yeah, that's pretty much everything to consider. I'm gonna do a little demo rotation for you guys right now just to see see how it's like you can do there we go. Mall discharge. There's nothing up, so I go back to that. Oh discharge is up, immediately discharge, Retlessness, discharge, phantom stride, discharge, go back to the regular ball lightnings and mauls, nothing's up. I do some voltic slashes. There we go, reaping strikes up, use reaping strike. I'll like discharges up again, use discharge again. Yeah, that's basically it. It's gonna. It's a lot of fun. It's and it's a really easy class to get into. Uh, as I said, it's currently not the best class to play because its damage has been greatly reduced since a nerf in 6.0 hit. Uh, but I do hope you'll give it a shot because it is very fun and is one of my favorite classes in the game. Here we have the Hatred Assassin. The Hatred Assassin is going to focus on applying its damage over time abilities to a target and then spreading them with lacerate to everybody that the, that is hit. So your two abilities that are going to be spread is going to be Creeping Terror and Discharge. You can see them right there. And whoever you hit with your lacerate, including the person that actually has the things, will have it spread to them, and you can do a lot of damage with this. Uh, some of the finer points of the class include the ability to use Death Field to increase the damage. So once you've applied your little abilities and spread them to everybody, you can then use Death Field and increase the damage that those little bits do. And Death Field itself does quite a bit of damage as well. Now, Eradicate is also one of your bigger single target damage over time abilities that you can't spread. But I would only recommend using it when it's glowing like that, because otherwise it's going to drain your force really, really quickly. Uh, there's also other single target normal assassin abilities that you have, including Assassinate, Thrash, Saber Strike, and uh, of course your Spike, which you can use while you're stealthed, as I'll demonstrate right here. And that's just going to stun the target, and depending on some utilities that you take, it might do some additional effects. Uh, some things to consider about the defensives on this class is that it doesn't have many. There is a force cloak that allow you that allows you to stealth out of combat, and this is going to be useful for uh, just getting yourself out of a tight situation if you want to survive. But generally in war zones, I actually would use this very uh, not very often because sometimes it's just better to die and respawn. In ranked uh, or some other modes where your death might mean a lot more, it's a different story, and you'll definitely want to be using this a whole lot. Then there's uh, Force Shroud, which is just going to block uh, a lot of the tech and force damages that uh, are going to be coming your way for about f uh, 3 seconds or 5 seconds, I believe, depending on the utilities that you take. And it can be very useful for just canceling out big damage from classes like the Lightning Sork if they're just targeting you. Uh, the other is going to be Deflection. Deflection just grants a huge 50% damage reduction uh, for, from melee weapon attacks that you're going to be taking. And that's a very good. Uh, that's going to be a very good thing for you to survive in a big group fight. Then there's Overcharge Saber, which does a minor amount of healing and also increases the damage of your uh, damage over time abilities. Uh, I mainly use this whenever during the fight. Uh, you can use it for the health increase. You can use it for the uh, damage increase. Either or basically works. You have Four Speed, which normally is mainly just a movement ability increase, but if you take the Phasing Phantasm ability, it actually will also produce uh, a 20% damage reduction during the uh, during the time that it is active. Another thing to be uh, n uh, to know about this class is that uh, for beginners, I would generally recommend going with the Quick Escalation Tactical, and what this is going to do is it's going to make your uh, 
this ability here, Leeching Strike, it's going to make it be able to be used multiple times. Actually, it didn't work right there, but when the cooldown comes out, it's going to have a chance to be able to use it multiple times. And each successive time that you use it, it's going to have a better chance of being used again. And this can rapidly heal you very quickly, which let me just demonstrate real quick by taking off this armor to lower my health and then putting it back on. So you can see that I've lost a lot of health there. And then I'm just going to use the Leeching Strike to gain it all back. There, you see it worked this time. And you can do this up to four times before it will actually hit the cooldown. And that can provide you with some really, really nice healing. Uh, another ability to think about is also Recklessness. Recklessness is just going to increase the critical chance uh, of your abilities. And that's going to be very helpful if you're going to be doing like a death field real quick or if you're going to be doing eradicate. I would typically use this right before those. And going back to quick explanation real quick, there is another uh, sort of thing that you can do with this. A little bit of an advanced technique where you can hit, hit, and then hit a third time. And at third three times, you can click the stacks off with right click. And then you can go back to doing it again. This will rapidly deplete your uh force see it didn't go again but that's sort of a it's, it's sort of luck based if you can get it to go again right afterwards but if you can it can do really really good heals you can get like six or even nine of them in if you start at full force uh but that, it's a little bit more of an advanced tactical a lot of people won't find the time to just go click off the stack really quick or they won't be able to identify it uh, another useful ability on this class is going to be your Phantom Stride, which will just get you from very far right up close to a target, and it will auto-activate your Eradicate to be used. No force required. And that's very nice to have uh, in a fight when your opponent's going to be running away from you. Other than that, you do have your general uh, main stun. It's going to stun for 4 seconds, and it's going to have a pretty good cool, uh, pretty low cooldown timer of about 40 seconds. And some other useful abilities to note in the class is going to be the uh, the Overload, which is just going to push enemies back in an AoE cone. Great for throwing people off on certain maps. And then there's going to be Whirlwind, which is a channeled ability, unless you take a utility and it won't activate. There we go. It's basically just going to stun the target in place unless they take damage. It's a Mez, not a stun. My bad there. It's going to mez the target in place for 8 seconds unless they take damage, in which case they'll be broken out of it. There are utilities you can take that modify this to either be an instant cast or like whenever it's broken, it will provide uh, the enemy reduced damage at that time and they won't be able to do as much. And this class also, you can start out on stealth in your opener for PvP. I would definitely recommend going in there in stealth and then just doing your rotation, getting those stacks onto your targets and then spreading them out with Lacerate doing an eradicate here or there, throwing down your death field. And yeah, it's generally a pretty easy class to play. You're going to be doing lacerate a lot, just spreading that shit everywhere uh, to as many people as you can, and that's, that's going to enable you to do the most damage that you possibly can. Uh, beware, this class is very squishy. It's going to, it doesn't have very high defensives, and it can die very easily. So I would recommend playing this with uh, maybe a tank or a healer present, but it can be played in solo as well. For the set bonus, you're going to want to take the death knell uh, set bonus. It's going to increase your damage by a little bit, and it's going to reduce the cooldown and recklessness. Uh, you're also going to want to take the quick escalation utility uh, tactical, I mean. But, you know, other than this, you could also just take the two-time trouble tactical, which is just going to increase the damage of your ticks every time you hit that with an uh, hit the person with the, uh, with the damage over time applied to them with a melee ability, which is going to be something like Thrash or Saber Strike or Lacerate. Uh, this one's good too, but if you do, yeah, if you don't care about the healing, go with that. Stats generally, as you can see, this is what would be recommended. Uh, that's pretty much it for the uh, hatred assassin. Here we have the advanced prototype power tech. This is currently one of the best classes in the game for doing damage to a single target at a really high rate, and that makes it very effective in PvP situations. Uh, the fundamentals of this class are basically going to revolve around its defensives, uh, buffing its uh, damage abilities, actually. So what you want to do is you want to build up these. 
these are energy loads energy loads will enable you to use this ability energy burst once you have four of them energy burst will be at its highest damage potential possible you build these up when you use the glowing rail shots which you can activate by pressing other abilities now they won't do it immediately afterwards so you'll want to just generally go through your rotation until one of them comes up that will go through rail shot and then use a rail shot to build it up and let me just get to full stacks right now four stacks once you're at four stacks you can use your energy burst for massive damage as you just saw there another uh, interesting thing that this class can do is it also has good little overtime damage with this ability retractable blade and a thermal detonator Generally, your defensives are going to just be these three abilities here. Culto Overload, Energy Shield, and Power Yield. Power Yield actually will automatically grant you four stacks of energy load with the tactical power load. And you're going to definitely want to take power load if you're going to be doing PvP. That's basically the only one you want. The other defensives also work. Uh, energy shield will just reduce your damage uh, by the damage taken by 25% for 15 seconds. And culto overload is simply going to heal you continuously when you're at low health. And this is going to be sort of your last dish. Just keep yourself up for a little longer until your other defensives come up or until a healer can get to you kind of ability. Uh, also, you have a thing known as a shoulder cannon. And shoulder cannons are a little bit of a complex mechanic to get into, but basically it's an extra damage ability that you will be able to use regardless of uh, being stunned or anything, or uh, and it has a quite a bit of a distance to see, use, as you can see. And it's interestingly off of the global cooldown, so you know when you use an ability you see the little cooldown, it doesn't hit shoulder cannon. So generally one of the good tactics would be to use abilities and then use shoulder cannon in between those abilities like I'm showing right here because it doesn't respect the total cooldown and you can get more damage in in between your little cooldown periods the class also has a lot of utility you have a grapple which basically just pulls the target to you and then you can do your damage to them now that they're closer to you there's a carbonize ability which is an aoe stun this is very useful in crowd fights you can go in there and just stun everybody and another thing to keep in mind with this class is it has hydraulic overrides you can go really really fast running around zipping chasing people doing whatever you want with this getting to new locations on the war zone map and another thing that you want to consider while playing this class is going to be explosive fuel. Uh, explosive fuel is going to increase the damage uh, and the critical chance of your uh, ranged and tech abilities for 15 seconds. But what it's really going to do is in conjunctions to the set bonus that you want. The set bonus being a uh, meteor baller. Now, once you when you have this set bonus, there's this thing called firefall. And Firefall is activated whenever you activate Explosive Fuel, and you can build charges of Firefall by doing damage with certain abilities that you can read on the bottom there. And at the end, Firefall will fully activate and do a large amount of damage dependent on the amount of stacks of Firefall that you were able to build over the course of Explosive Fuel. Now, it's actually, very quite, e it's actually quite easy to build these stacks uh, if you simply use explosive fuel and then hit somebody with deadly onslaught as you can see deadly onslaught builds up quite a few stacks of firefall and enables you to do a hell of a lot of damage once that drops and if you see over here you can see about the stat recommendations you can go for a little more crit and a little less accuracy uh, but that's sort of up to personal preference and overall, I would say this is actually one of the easier classes to play in the game once you get used to it. Certainly easier than the other uh, PT specs, and I would very highly recommend this to new players who want to get into PvP and are looking for a class that's going to do great damage, and it's not that complicated to play. Here we have the Arsenal Mercenary. It's actually one of the easier classes to get into as well. And uh, it is a ranged class, meaning you can do damage from distance, and you most of your abilities will activate at much greater distances than most other classes. And uh, this, this class will mainly uh, revolve around your blazing bolts. What I like to do for a damage rotation on this class is I'll use blazing bolts, then I'll use priming shot and tracer missile to reset blazing bolts cooldown, and then use it one more time. 
And what you can do is you use two abilities in between. You use Heat Seeker Missile and you use Rail Shot. And then you can use another Tracer Missile and you can have your uh, Blazing Bolts back up again. And then what I usually like to do is I'll throw one ability, two ability, and that will get me able to reset the cooldown one more time. Rail Shot, Heat Seeker, Tracer Missile, and the cooldown is reset once more. So yeah, two abilities in between, and then you can use a Tracer Missile to reset the cooldown on Blazing Bolts, or you can do an instant Tracer Missile and then reset that on Blazing Bolts. Uh, some other things to consider on this class is going to be uh, your Electronet, one of the most powerful abilities in the game. Basically, it's going to uh, it's going to do damage to the person that you use it on, and it's going to slow them down, and it's going to prevent them from using any big defensives, especially sorcerers. It will prevent them from using their bubble or their phase, and if they take if they're moving, it will also do even more damage to them. So if they're trying to run from you, if they're panicking, it's going to do, uh, it's going to hurt them a lot more. Uh, another thing to consider in this class is your rocket out, which is going to do, uh, it's just going to be a big escape ability. You can just rocket right back. I also like to use it to like charge into a fight. So I'll like quickly whip around and then rocket into a fight like this. Uh, it's going to be also jet boost. Jet boost just keeps people away from you. It's an AOE cone that just throws everybody around you away from you. Another thing to consider is your concussion missile, which is a charge up ability, as you can see. And once it hits, it will mez the target for, uh, I believe, uh, is it six or eight seconds, I believe, and that basically will make it so that they can't do anything, uh, and they're stunned there, unless they take damage, in which case that will be, uh, prematurely ended. Uh, another thing to consider on this class is it does have this thing called Stealth Scan, so if you're fighting, like, a stealth class, like an operative or an assassin, and they just sort of stealth out, you can quickly go to your Stealth Scan and then just place that somewhere and search, and they will be brought out of their stealth if they're still within the area. So you kind of want to like predict, like, okay, which way are they going to go, and then boom, stealth scan that direction. And you're going to be able to catch them and bring them back out of stealth to finish them off, or uh, if they're trying to like stealth and come back at you with a spike, then you're going to be able to stop them from doing that. Uh, a few more things to consider in terms of uh, defensives. This class is actually one of the greatest. Uh, it has this thing called responsive safeguards, which is basically just going to throw a shield of nope at you, and this is going to reflect basically all damage back to the people that try to deal it, other than AoE damage. And so that that basically is going to be... Uh, you also get healed while uh, while they do damage to you on that, so it's, it's a double whammy. Uh, that's going to be one of the very good uh, defensives you have. You also have Energy Shield, which is going to reduce the damage by 25%, uh, but this one can also heal you if you take this uh, the Trauma Regulator's utility. So with this, when you're taking damage while this is up, it will build up. Uh, and based on how much it builds up, when Energy Shield finally drops at the end of the 12 seconds, it's going to heal you back a bunch of health. So basically, this is the starter uh, defensive. I basically use this first so that I can get all my health back after it's slowly whittled down, after my health has gone down slower from the fact that this is up. Then there's Culto Overload. Culto Overload basically just heals you continuously once you hit uh, about 35% health, and it'll heal you very rapidly as well. Uh, this is basically just like a nope, I'm not going to be dying once you get low. And you can buy yourself a little bit more time for another defensive to come up or for your healer to get up to you. This class also has what's known as off heals because uh, there is a healing specification named uh, Bodyguard. And you have some of their abilities. You have Emergency Scan, which can heal a friendly target for uh, about you know, 12,000, 14,000 health. And you can use this on friendlies or you could use this on yourself. And, you know, it just, it's, uh, it, it, particularly in ranked matches, it's often good practice. If, like, you're not taking focus to, like, every so often, whoever's taking focus, throw a quick heal on them. They'll appreciate it, and it'll probably help your team win. Another heal that you have is Rapid Scan. This one actually doesn't have a cooldown, so you can do this as much as you want. So, say, like, you're in a fight, and you're just trying, like, your ally's about to go down, but no one's really focusing you. And another, uh, an enemy player is also about to go down. It's going to be the difference of you just sitting there and rapid scanning your guy that's about to go down versus the enemy team not doing that for their guy that's going to be giving you that win because they're going to be surviving a lot better with your rapid scans to heal them than uh, the, the enemy team's person who's low is going to be doing without any heals at all. Uh, another thing to consider in this class is that it does have a few AoEs. It has Sweeping Blasters which can be used very effectively in regular war zones uh, in order to keep people from capping nodes because it will it will affect the it will affect them from behind the nodes so it's, you can't see them but you can still hit them with this ability uh, also this one does a lot more damage and looks really cool as well 
uh, yeah, that's about all there is to consider. For your uh, armor, I would actually go with the bodyguard, uh, the body armor of Consecrated Fire, uh, or Vampress, basically everything of Consecrated Fire. The Consecrated Fire sub bonus. And for the tactical, I use Prime Ignition. And you can see the stats that I use on the side there. And that's about everything for the uh, Arsenal Marauder. I said Arsenal Marauder. I am a massive idiot. This is the Arsenal Mercenary. <laughs> well, that was the video, and thanks for watching. I would like to note that this video does not cover all the classes in the game, merely ones that I think that new players could easily get into, and it doesn't provide full explanations for how to play those classes. It's just a basic overview of some of the things I like to do and some of the easy ways to sort of understand and get a general idea of how the class works. If you guys would like more in-depth guides on each of these, let me know in the comment section and I'll be uh, happy to get over and make more detailed rotation guides, uh, explanations of utilities and like giving you my thoughts on exactly why you should take this versus something else. If that's something you guys are interested, please let me know in the comments. But yeah, this is just basically an overview video. Gives new players an idea of what the classes are like in Endgame and which ones they may want to pursue. Uh, to all the Steam brothers and sisters, welcome to SWTOR. It's a really fun game and I hope you stick around. It has a lot to offer.